Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today's topic is Concepts of Controllability and Observability. So, the main aim in control system is to obtain an optimal solution for a given control problem. Right? This is the basic concept we all know. The main aim of a control system is to give an accurate output and also we are also focused to maintain the system in a stable state. Right? So, here the following points are considered. So, here the first point is for a given system, is it possible to transfer any initial condition to any other desired state in a finite time under the effect of suitable control input force? That is, we are having a system. Right. Now, we have to change the system from its initial state to a particular state. How we can do that? under the effect of some suitable input okay by giving some input we are changing the system from its initial state to the desired state right so if this can be done under finite time okay finite time we know right under a particular time for example 2 minutes duration 5 minutes duration 2 milliseconds just like that if this can be done in a finite time then that comes under the category concept of controllability. Right? Now the next thing is, if the output is measured for finite time, right, we are measuring the output, then with the knowledge of input, is it possible to determine the initial state of the system? This is just reverse of the previous case. You know, here we are measuring the output and we know what is the input. Right, whether it is possible to judge the initial state of the system. I hope I am making the concept clear here. So, in the first case, you see, we are moving a system from its initial state to some desired state with the help of the input under a particular time duration. This is known as controllability. And here the thing is, we know the output as well as the input. With the help of this output and input, is it possible to determine the initial state of the system? Okay, this concept is known as observability. Right. So now we are going to discuss these two things in a bit detail. So first thing is definition of controllability. Right. Again here, the same definition is explained but, but with some terms included, right. So, a system is said to be completely state controllable if it is possible to transfer the system state from initial state to any other desired state in a specific time, right. Again, the same thing. When we can say a system is controllable, a system is said to be controllable if we can transfer the system from its initial state since initial state here it is represented as t naught right so x t naught to any other desired state and here the desired state is x of t d in, in a particular time interval okay by a control vector here u of t right so this is known as controllability here, as we all know, u of t is nothing but our input, right? So, how we can fix this controllability? So, controllability is tested by doing two types of test. One is known as Kalman's test and another one is known as Gilbert's test, okay? There are two tests. With any one of these tests, we can tell whether the system is controllable or not. So, first we are going to discuss with Kalman's test for controllability. So, here in this case, as we all know, x dot is given by a x of t plus b u of t. So, here in, in this case, again a is nothing but a n cross n matrix and u of t is some m cross 1 and x of t is n cross 1. Right. So, the necessary and sufficient condition for the system to be completely state controllable is that the rank of the composite matrix QC is N. Right. So, here what is mean by N? N is nothing but the matrix value of A. 
because here a is given by a n cross n matrix right so n is nothing but order of the matrix whenever the value of this qz is equal to n then we can say that the system is completely controllable right so here the composite matrix qc here the qz is represented by this expression b is to ab is to a square b right so this is the matrix of qc that is here this gives how the matrix has to be arranged okay the first column should have b second column should have a b and the third column should have a square b right so here you see b a b and a square b are the various columns okay they denote the columns now the next thing is condition for complete state controllability in the s plane so here regarding s plane how can we find whether the system is stable or not so here no cancellation of poles and zeros occurs in the transfer function of the system right for example just consider the transfer function like this s plus 2 divided by s plus 2 into s plus 4 right let this be the transfer function so what are known as poles the denominator terms are known as poles and the numerator terms are known as zeros right so here in this transfer function we can cancel this zero and this pole right because they are same so no cancellation of poles and zeros occurs in the transfer function right we, there should be no cancellation that is you should not have a transfer function like this that is a transfer function which has the same value of pole and a zero. Right. If cancellation occurs, then the system cannot be controlled in the direction of the cancelled mode. Suppose if there is any cancellation, then we can say that the system is uncontrollable. Right. So the next we are going to proceed with Gilbert's test for controllability. So, in Gilbert's test, again, there are two conditions, right? The first condition is when the system matrix has distinct eigenvalues. So, again, this is somewhat related to max. We don't want to go much with max. While solving problem, I'll explain you. But here, just know what is the concept, right? So, in this case, the system matrix can be diagonalized and the state model can be converted into canonical form. So, consider the state model. So, this is your basic expression, right? X dot is given by AX plus BU and Y is given by CX plus DU, right? Now, we are going to convert this state model, right? This state model into canonical form, right? So, this state model can be converted to canonical form by the transformation. Here, X is replaced by M into Z. And M is nothing but modal matrix. And Z is nothing but transformed state variable vector. Right. When you listen to the terms, it might look somewhat different. But believe me, while solving problems, it won't be such a big issue. Right. So, here just we are transforming the state model to the canonical form. So, to convert it to the canonical form, just we are replacing this x by m z. Right. Here, m is model matrix and it is a transformed vector z. Right. So, the transformed state model, you see, it is written as x dot is replaced as z dot which is equal to you just keep these things in memory just like a formula. Okay. No need to go much deeper. Here this cap is z plus b cap u. And y is given by c cap is z plus d u. And here for the variations which are done here it is written. You see this cap is given by m inverse a m. And B cap is M inverse B and C cap is just C M. Right. So, in this case, the condition for controllability is the matrix B cap must have no zeros with all zeros. Right. That is, it should not have any row which contains all zeros. If any row of the matrix B cap is zero, 
then the corresponding state variable is uncontrollable right if the matrix b cap has a row of zeros then the state variable then the corresponding system is uncontrollable right you keep only this thing in mind it is more than enough now we are proceeding with case 2 when the system matrix has repeated eigenvalues so again here we are considering the state model again we are converting this state model to jordan canonical form right so here x is equal to m z and again m is the model matrix and z is the transformed state variable vector again we are replacing this state model by its equivalent canonical form so here z dot is equal to j z plus b cap u and again y is given by c cap z plus d u right and here again j is nothing but m inverse a m and b cap is m inverse b and again here c cap is c m right and here the condition of controllability is given by you see the condition for controllability is elements of any row of b cap that corresponds to the last row of each jordan block are not all zeros and rows corresponding to other state variables must not have all zeros here again okay while solving problem it will be very easy for you to understand these sentences right again here we should not have a row of zeros again the same thing right so here comes the end of this topic if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section okay don't get much confused with the terms just now i had explained when you solve problems you will get a clear idea okay just to give an introduction i have just made this video and further if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you